Guess who fixed it? Uh, you. With yeah. your big old brain. I went downstairs and then I was like, hey, there was a reset button. It said it would delete all my data from the app, but that doesn't matter because, like, I don't have any recordings or anything, so it's fine that I need to keep it even so those are in a separate folder, so it's fine. So I clicked reset and then I tried again and they're like, wait, update. So basically they updated the app and then it wouldn't work unless we reset the app afterwards. But didn't okay. you couldn't tell you know that because it wouldn't open at all. Which is fucking dumb, but it worked. I'm here. Hello. Hi, how are you? Oh so great. I'm about to, I'm just having such a great time. I can tell. I'm mm -hmm. so glad. Mm -hmm. Okay, you ready to do this shit? Yeah, but the intro's still gonna be normal. You you gotta you gotta that's that's the one thing I need you to do for me. Okay, well, yeah, when I asked if you were going to do it or if I was going to do it, you said that I had to be the one to do it, so. That's, um, that's the way of the world. Okay, uh, you want to guess how many pages of notes I took before you open up the document? I mean, I already opened it, but it's not separated into pages on my phone, so I'm going to go with a solid three and a half. Six. Oh, God. This is the shortest in the series. I would like you to know this. The next one is over 500 pages. Uh, I'm gonna do something drastic, just so you know. Yeah, same. Um, this one was like 350-ish pages. Yeah, I gave all of them secondary titles in my notes, right? Yeah. Uh, um, and like I've already talked about how the second one is gonna be the racist one, and that other secondary title I'm giving it is the unnecessarily long one, because like the last one is about the same length, but it makes sense. Because they also have to end the series in that time, as well as do the whole romance. So it makes sense. The second one makes no sense. It's just all the same stuff happening again and again and again and again and again. And so annoying. It's so annoying. <sighs> so annoying. Um, but yeah, it, it, this is a thing that's happening. Um, hello, welcome to Fish and Fire Podcast. Hey, where were we the past two weeks? Answer? I don't fucking know. <laughs> well, it's called... We read the book, but then it didn't happen, and then Rose DNF other book, so yes. no episode. I DNF for my We did a break. Fans. We did a lot. We did a, yeah. I DNF for the fans, okay? Um, so I have to watch Coraline now, but I DNF for the fans. <laughs> uh, Listen, all, I, all I'm thinking about is Avi fitting Jack Daniels into here as well. Okay. Um... And uh, someone finished it and really liked it. It was not me. Uh, and then we did both read I gave Coldest a Touch. Uh, I didn't take notes because I thought we were going to be able to immediately record. But then we LOL. were because someone was not home. And then right when someone returned home, I left home. <laughs> and then the year was over. <laughs> it was like the, 24 hours later, the year was over. So there was not enough time. Um, so one time I left my house because I had no choice. I did have a choice, but I had a good time, so it's fine. Um, yes, I believe in you. Thank you. Uh, I can actually lean that into my fun fact for this episode hilariously. Uh, that one, we'll see if we can record it with things off my dome, and if we can, it'll be a bonus episode or, like, a background backup episode in case something happens where I DNF a book again. Well, I think between the both of us, our brains will fill in the gap. It, it should, right? Like, yeah. Um. Anyway, it's Fish and Flower. Podcasts. I'm Flower, aka Rose. Uh, my I have two fun facts. One, uh, with this episode, there will officially be a Stingray playlist, a playlist of just Stingray run episodes, because this will be yeah. the fourth one, I believe. Right? Cause okay, fine. There's, yeah. there's Chris Six. There's uh, To Be Devoured. Take <laughs> and. The oh, four uh, hour, Wicker King. four and a half hour Wicker King episode because I'm rolling on my head. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know that book you read five times last year? Um, I'm normal. What about it? Uh, but yeah, no. With uh, this whole entire month, it's gonna be the Four Horsemen series. Uh, all read by me, and notes taken by me, but the fish host it. So therefore, they're yeah. all gonna be. It's gonna be a playlist. The end. Um, the other update is that when I was out of my house and I was talking to people. Bestie's boyfriend informed me that he has listened to this podcast. Which Which is wild enough. Excited. And then the fact that the episode he listened to was the crack and smut. And then he just dropped that ball okay. and didn't say anything else about it. I was like, 
you didn't tell me your thoughts and opinions. I you no. said I was like, at least if you're gonna listen to a spot one, listen to the Golden Bullocks and Three Bears one, because that one's at least really bad, funny bad. Like it's a horrendous time yeah. I had, but it's hilarious. But like this is what I tell you that I told someone about the podcast, but I that is an acquaintance. And then they proceeded to listen to part of an episode. And you know what episode it was? What? Schlong out. Pull <laughs> out. Hilarious. You know, it just reminds said, me that the one episode like Bessie has cool. listened to is the first Ice Planet Barbarians. Just because she saw it in the description that I put that we did a Sims quiz. You know the Sims quiz we randomly did? Yes. Yeah. And she really likes the Sims. So she was like, I gotta check out this episode. Then she was like, do you only do spot episodes? So I'm like, no. Go listen to the Carmilla episode. <laughs> and then she didn't. That was almost a year ago. I know, That's right? crazy. Yeah, no, next month is our one year anniversary, bestie. Of this podcast. How long for friends? Friends is How around long? April. Podcast is February. Yeah, it's like a week or two before your birthday. Yeah. Yeah, because that's when we first regularly ha- started hanging out. With oh, wait, I just joined for random speech one day, and then I went to your solo friends, and that's how we became friends. Yeah. That's crazy. Remember when I did sprints? Yes, and you do start doing sprints again. I miss you. Maybe next weekend, because maybe people are leaving my house. I still haven't introduced myself. I know. This is what happens. <laughs> this is why this is the second part of the intro. Okay, you go. Do your thing. Um, my name is Fish. I don't know if you've gathered that. AKA Stingray. And um I don't do I have a fact? No, besides the fact uh Oh, I'm rereading the Love Hypothesis because that's going to be an episode in February. Uh-huh. And, you know, giggling and kicking my feet. I started it last night, like late last night, and I got to 30%, and then all I've done today is read. You know what the fun fact should have been? That Kiki called me. Oh, yeah, she did. She she called you twice. <laughs> I know, it's very funny. I liked it. I was like, hi, Kiki. <laughs> hi, Kiki. She's laying right here with it's me. Thank you, Kiki. Um... This is very much a stream of cautious podcast. Can you guess that? We've been recording for eight minutes. Can you guess that? Um, this is why no one to the podcast because they can never get to the damn intro. <laughs> yep. Very, very similar to how we talk to each other on a daily basis on today's episode is Pestilence, the first book in the Four Horsemen series by Laura Thalassa, the one I I've labeled as the tame one in my notes. Um, also, the other thing on the very top of my notes is, like, me talking about how I uh, read this pre-pandemic, and when I labeled it as read again on Goodreads and whatnot, right? Um, and I, I saw, like, when I first read it, it was October of 2019 through February, February of 2020 when I read this. Like, I was still roommates with Bestie when I read this. Damn, that's crazy. I was still in college, on campus, when I read this. I always pull up the notes because they have a good time with. Same size of stuff watching reels. Yes. <laughs> That's so sad. I can't watch reels while you talk because I have no attention span. Time to pull up Stardew Valley. Oh my god, I hate you. Um, not the fun fact. Good to read recommended the soul to keep for readers who enjoy this book. That. Yeah. I've read it. That I. That I've had rated this five stars for nearly four years. <laughs> Don't question how I type that. You know, I saw that when I led to label it as red. I was like, hello, who are you? I rated I that to one two that stars and rated this five. one five. Like, I knew what you were trying to say, but damn, Bessie. Bella, Fire. Bella, kicking my computer is not what you need to do, Bella. Hi, Bella. Tell her to say hi. Hi, Bella, Bella dog. Bella, the fish is hi. Bella, hi. where the hell you been, loca? <laughs> I would turn off my camera for you, but, like, all you would be able to see is her tail and her butt. Oh, well. Uh, there's a bird. There's a fucking hell. There's a... <laughs> Can you tell I don't do this? Uh, there's 11 burn slash fire pumps. Okay. Are you ready? Uh-huh. Are you ready for it? Okay. In the prologue we learned five years ago, the four horsemen came to Earth and went to the four corners of the world. In the process, they wiped out most of humanity and most of 
electronic slash luxuries of current day shut down of luxuries of current day shut down, causing even planes to crash, hence the apocalypse and the first horseman is back. Pestilence. We're gonna ignore the fact I can't say pestilence. <laughs> That's gonna be a real issue. <laughs> I did mostly just say he and she because they're like the only character ninety percent of the time, but like the word pestilence there is in here a lot. Pharaoh with no age pulls the short straw to stay behind as the rest of the fire department leaves to shoot pestilence. I, okay. Her job is to kill the first one while everyone else evacuates. Wherever he goes, there's a plague. Wherever he goes, a plague goes through that kills everyone. See, this is <laughs> I type weird and then I read it differently. Bella, I swear to God. Well, I asked you if I need to read this straight through, and you're like, yeah, you can, so you're the one who went to college. You're the one who's supposed to know how to form correct sentences. Yeah, but I I read them differently than when I type them, and I fix it what? as I read it. Well, I don't know anything about this book, so it's just going to be straight through. Okay. Where was I? Uh, the plague kills everyone. Okay. She leaps on the highway for him with a gun, but has the face. <laughs> That is 100% accurate. That is 100% accurate. You cannot tell me I'm wrong. He, she literally goes, wow, his beauty is so angelic. Goes to shoot. I really oh, he's so hot. It's wrong because I've never read the damn book. <laughs> First time the horsemen went through, they wiped out human technology to give them a chance to repent and become worthy. But they failed and pestilence is back, killing everyone in the town he goes through for the past seven months. Valid. One of the main warning signs is Whenever he comes, all the animals slash birds run away a few minutes before him. I gotta read this differently. <laughs> uh, she has a big gun, but shoots him. And, and not the horse! Which makes her feel so sick, as she should. What the fuck? Um, Mr. Sir is still alive, but can't find where she put the gun. Oh, okay, so uh, I guess there are cold burns from alive. I, okay, this is this she is the, the first. Bunch. This is technically the second fire pun because I don't think I put in the notes. Her name is Sarah Burns. Yes, I remember. And she's a firefighter, oh. and she burns this man alive. That's the first thing you learn. Where did she get the fire to burn him alive? I don't know. She just had matches. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, well, she throws up because. She just burned somebody alive. Yeah. Um, and the horse disappeared, and then she goes to sleep. With <laughs> uh, literally three feet on the side away. Of the road. Three feet away, she goes to sleep. She goes to sleep three feet away from a body she just burned up. Okay. <laughs> Normal. Um, <laughs> she wakes up, uh, being choked to man, Mr. Man, calling her vile. Interesting. He's only partially healed. His hands and his feet are just stone. Okay. That's interesting information. <laughs> Quote. His clothes are burned, so he uses one of her blankets as a skirt. End quote. That's the exact sentence. Yeah. He takes away all her weapons. Um, apparently other people have tried to kill him. But she'll be, she's gonna suffer. She, she, apparently he likes torturing people. Um, <laughs> you know, I can't say if that's valid or not. I mean, she's burned know. alive, so. And I guess it goes both ways, right? Yeah, he has killed millions of people. She burned him LOL. alive. LOL. <laughs> okay, uh, he ties her hands. Attach her to the back of the horse. Uh, so, so she has to run to follow him. Yeah. And then they stop at an abandoned house. Um, we find clothes. Hell yeah. Make the sex, sexy deaf person wear clothes finally. Um, flannel. That's gay. Uh, not the glowing angelic tattoos. Hello. You know what? If someone who killed a bunch of people just appeared in front of me one day and I tried to kill them and they had glowing angelic tattoos, maybe I would double think. 
maybe I would second guess myself for my decisions. I don't know. Anyways, um, I. <laughs> Malcolm watching her go to the bathroom. It happens like 20 times. And makes her uncomfortable. And then ties her up to a banister. Yeah, he just watches her pee like 20 times in this book. He must be really used to watching people use the bathroom. Like, Or maybe he just likes it. Which, okay, go off, I guess. I mean, the way it's described when he like looks at her when he's she's partially naked or something, he's like looking at her with like an analytical mind. Like, he does not knows, like, human beauty or anything. He's just, like, flesh? I don't know. Um, until the moment when it changes, and then it's not, like, flesh, I don't know. It's more, like, flesh, ooga, ooga. <laughs> okay. Also, why is it famous, though? Like, I feel like there's so many other places. So, like, you, I, don't I don't know. Anyways, um, yeah, she stored, so she had to walk how many miles? I don't know, behind the kilometers, because it's in Canada. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> uh, she sleeps in the bed while he watches. Fun. Okay, Edward Cullen. She apologizes for hurting him the way she did. Are you really sorry? Are you just, are you just yes, he sorry? Yes, like, he does go, like, are you, like, he's all, like, questioning. And she's like, I don't regret, like, killing you because, like, you killed millions of people but also like um, i regret going as far as i did and doing the extent that i did and also i will always regret having to kill someone that's not something i want to do right um so you know that, like, this is the first heart to heart they have don't worry uh, they have plenty uh, she wakes up mr man who's not there so she tries to escape oh but she gets shot twice and then he drags her again but, oh her arm pops out of the socket and then she passes out from pain, fun. You know what this has in common with? <laughs> I wrote that sentence that I immediately thought of when Marrow dislocated her shoulder. Mm. And then Noah just pops it back to place. Oh, I miss Noah. He's so hot. Pestilence does Pretty pop way. her shoulder back into place, yeah. She just breaks. She wakes up. Um, oh, not that thinking he's an angel. And thanks for this thing with her. <laughs> Apparently, they, she's sleeping for a while. Food, restroom occasionally, you know, casual things. Um, Are oh. you just reading the notes? <laughs> oh, I have to read your sentences, like, multiple times to process them to say them out loud. Um, <laughs> she gets well enough to function, you know. Um, now they, they're walking, and she's investigating. Um and the house, and, you know, the owner's just dying from the flood. Oh, she holds his hand until he dies and realizes pestilence is making her do this so she can watch the world end before she dies. What the fuck? You know what would really help the situation? Therapy. <laughs> I think that applies to everybody and everything. Especially us. <laughs> I'm trying to imagine this de- demon guy wearing jeans. <laughs> I know, right? Every time he changes clothes, I'm like, what the fuck? Especially since he's, like, over six feet tall and he's super muscular. And, if, like, the first time she sees him find clothes, she's like, wow, it's a miracle he found clothes because he's such a large man. How, how, I'm like, you know, how all this stuff is happening and she's also still ugly and being like, ooga ooga. He attractive man. I don't get that cause- Men. Um. <laughs> but how tall is she? How how oh, how much over six feet are we talking? Like she doesn't give an exact number, but she does. I feel like it's only valid if she was like seven foot or taller, because she's not human. I think death is the no war is actually the largest one. I'm pretty sure. I need them to be over all of them to be over seven feet tall. I don't care. They're all Anyways, over six um, feet. <laughs> whatever. Um, she gets attached to the, I'm a, it says waistband, but I, okay, like, what would you tie that to besides the, the belt, belt loops? loops? Yeah. Yeah. She's attached to his belt loops, which, why is that kind of hot? <laughs> um, and she's <laughs> my. 
Oh, uh, he confirms that he controls the plague and he wants everybody dead. Valid, I guess. Go off. Go off, King. Um. Sorry. Quote, they stop at another house for the night where she immediately starts a fire as he stares at her ass. End quote. Um. Oh, we get banter. We love banter. I, I thoroughly enjoy banter. Um, I don't know if you know this app. Oh, yeah, no, there's a lot of banter in this where she has a lot of crude humor and she uses it to banter with him, but he, like, either half the time doesn't understand it because he's an angelic being, or two, (laughs) just ignores her and does, like, and so it's just that. Banter is so stressful, okay? Um, he takes a bath, she thinks about her parents and cries, boo-hoo. Um, oh, he comes down completely naked. Which weirds her out, which, yeah, if I saw this angelic creature of some sort with a death plague like, come downstairs naked, I would be like, what the fuck is going on? Oh, what please. is, what, what is this, the beginning of him doing? Do you need me to explain quote, this personally? Quote, the beginning, <laughs> quote, the beginning of him doing the opposite of what she asked when she says, please, due to her burning him alive despite him begging, please. Yeah, um, so, so, so when she burnt him alive, uh, he said, please, uh, don't, and then she lit him on fire. Um, I would like to know, technically it was an accident, because she accidentally dropped the, um, match because her hands were shaking so much, uh, (laughs) but she burnt him, um, and so now whenever she wants something, or, uh, wants him to do something else, she will say, if she says please, he will automatically do the opposite because he knows that will make her uncomfortable. And he, she did the opposite when he said please. And he's all like, I didn't want to burn alive. And I said please not to. And oh. you did it. So if you want to go to the bathroom on your own and say please, I'm going to watch you go to the bathroom. Thank you very much. Who thought, why is that kind of hot? Two, I hate your notes because they're, what the fuck? At least like my notes like every time. are full, complete sentences, and you can tell what's going on. Anyways, um... Yeah, no, this one is him being, her being like, hey, can you, like, please put on some clothes? And him being only like, oh, please? Well, then definitely no. And then immediately still goes, gets changed. It's weird. Um, he's just lounging around naked for a while. Uh, he leaves and tells her to take off her shirt. Um... Quote, she assumes some weird sex stuff is about to happen, so she grabs the fire poker to attack him, but he comes back slow with him with medical supplies. You know, I, her, her, she's valid. It's, he's still a man of some sort. Mm-hmm. That annoys him, so he rips off of her and bandages to replace the, and bandages to replace them. Um, then she has a breakdown. Quote, she asked him if this makes them happy, but she does not believe his agreement. Okay. Mm-hmm. Quote. <laughs> um, she questions him a lot about um, why he's being kind, and he says, quote, suffering is for the living. I'm confused about that whole sentence, but go off, I guess. Um, um, yeah, no. Oh, okay. Yeah. It, it, the next thing is displayed. So I jumped the gun. Um, uh, he admits that she can't die from the infection because he can control all sickness, which is kind of cool. Like, man does have cool powers. I can't lie. Uh, Wait till famine. Wait till death. Quote, he bandages up her wrist next, and she's high heat into him. I just, not the thought I just had. He's literally, like, tenderly banding up the, her wrists that are, like, raw and bleeding from, you know, him ba- binding her and dragging her behind him, right? Uh, but he's, like, tenderly wrapping them up and being super sweet and, like, careful and all this stuff. And she's like, what the fuck? And then, like, she's, like, noticing his, the shape of his face and she's like, wow, you're so attractive like this. And I was like, girl, please. You know, if someone caringly wrapped up my wrist after whatever activity occurred to make my put my wrist in the state, you know, I I get it. I would do, uh, you know, um, pestilence watches flesh, helps her bathe, and she tells him her name. 
Yeah, it's been weeks. <laughs> he has not known her name this whole time. He just keeps on calling her human. That's kind of funny. She tries to annoy him and is trying hot chocolate on the horse. I'm sick. Um, not the horse being named Trixie Skills. That's <laughs> yep, yep. I want to make a Trixie Mattel joke, but I don't know how it makes that work. Anyway, um. Say wow. Not him dumping out the hot chocolate. That's so. Yeah, she gets really ugly. angry. Oh, just drink the damn hot chocolate, you <laughs> disease brother. <laughs> I don't know what that called him. Um, yeah, no, it does come up later where, like, he's, like, complaining about coffee and tea. And she's like, you know what's really good? Hot chocolate. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> more banter. He asked her about her hobbies? He asked her about her hobbies, okay? Um... Which are literature, if her dream to study at university, boo-hoo. Um, <laughs> yes, where she did study and she replies, four horsemen came to Earth and made a mess of the world. I'm sick. If that gives you the vibe of what she's like 24-7 throughout this whole entire book, yeah. Um, yeah, no, they have a yes. lot of conversations on just the horse, because they're like riding a horse for like 18 hours a day, stuck together. Uh, and so he... Is this also a magical horse? Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, kind of. Um, it... Well, it's like a normal horse, but, um, horse. She, uh, likes to annoy him by just, like, quoting literature and poems to him and whatnot, but then he likes it, so then she starts just explaining her life, but then, uh, and it starts to annoy him, but then, like, eventually he starts liking her, so then he's all like, I like hearing about your life story, so they just have a lot of conversations. On the Interesting. Horse. On Trixie skills. Okay, um... They stop, they make a detour in a town to get some more metal... Uh, to a hospital in a town to get more medical supplies. Um, he notices that seeing all the sick people makes her really uncomfortable, so he can t- goes out of his way to keep doing this. Um, he doesn't like her silent treatment. She gives him afterwards. LOL. Um, we find apple pie and moonshine in the next house. That's uh-huh. fun. There's a lot oh, of alcohol. He's all- Oh, it's the first time he eats. Okay. Mm-hmm. God, that's for God he's a being. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> um, why would she say please? Like, I'm. Literally, every time she one... says please, and I'm like, girl, you fucking dumbass. There's another time where it's like, things are about to happen. And she's like, please. And then he's like, well, now I'm going to go. Bye. Um, anyways. Um,. She doesn't want to go out in the freezing rain, but she says please, so, you know. Uh, she nearly freezes to death, but whatever. Um, not him freaking out when he notices and takes her to a random house of the family, and it passes out. Ah! She wakes up naked, snuggling pestilence, and assumes they bang, but he was just keeping her warm, but his perusal, perusal what the, of her nudity is less emotionless. What the fuck is perusal? He's perusing her nudity. I like. I just didn't. Why would you say perusal? <laughs> oh no, that's what I felt right when I typed it out last night at like seven p.m. It's fine. No, well, she stays for four days while the family dies, and after the fact, he admits he doesn't like watching them die. Well, fuck you for making her watch when you don't like it. Yeah, no. Most of the time, when he they're staying at a house and there's people there, and she's like taking care of these dying people, he will just leave the house. For ninety percent of the day, that's and she doesn't know where he goes. Emoji. The only reason she doesn't try to run again is because she doesn't want to get shot with a bow and arrow again. So. Oh. Yeah. Um. They go to a new place. Um. But she starts getting really quote snippy about his quote job. Mm-hmm. So he gags her and binds her until and leaves her like that until she calms down. Like, she just had a temper tantrum. I, anyways. Yeah, she gives her more, he, she gives him more silent treatment after that. And he's like, how um, dare you? We're going to Vancouver, apparently. Um, oh. <laughs> they understand. Immediately, they're getting, they're, they're trying to get got. So they're, they're getting got, you know? Um, 
lots of people die via him. Um, and she tries to help the rest of the people. Fun. Mm-hmm. Um, they go running out of the ocean when he passes out for his shirt. Okay, Jesus. Yeah, when he said the, the horses have magical powers, I was just thinking of the time that the horse went over the ocean. You know? And that's a horse thing, Sean. This poor horse has to Don't go worry. so It's not the least that happens to the horse. Stuff. Poor tricksy skills. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, we get to the shore. She's removing all the armor. Put his head in her lap and plays with his hair as a violent and stuff. Yeah, he's just popping out bullets from his skin as he's moaning in pain, and she's just, like, petting his hair. Why, why, why does that make me want to giggle? <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of funny, though. Why am I more, am I, why, we are not normal. We, okay. Um, he regained consciousness, con- consciousness for a second. He's like, wow, you didn't run. I don't know if he expressed that thought, but, you know. Um. Yes, he did. She tells herself she didn't run because with him having to care for her human needs, she is pulling him down. I'm going to pretend that's actually about this point. Um, quote, this is where Rose starts skin reading, so have fun. Thanks. <laughs> um, they get to an abandoned beach house. Oh, they get hella drunk. She teaches them how to eat pasta. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, he doesn't know how to eat pasta, so she, like, literally... You know, the whole scene in one of the ones that goes where, like, she, they're, like, molding plate. It's like that, but, like, it's her, like, sc- spinning spaghetti on a s- fork. That's kind <laughs> of funny. Window. It's very funny. Um, he watches her bathe. Um, he, but he, he's into it. I'm not going to start singing she's on that right now. Um, they almost kiss. Oh. Ugh, but he's taking his time. <laughs> Oh my god, so she says to leave and he leaves. Girl, uh-huh. keep your act together. Cut the one please from your vocabulary. Uh huh. I don't want to I would like you to know, after this point on, whenever she says please, he will do what she asks when she says please, because usually it's sexual oh, okay. things. Okay. Um, they go for water again. Okay, Jesus. Um, she pulls off the horse. Thanks to him. <laughs> Okay. Um, she almost drowns, but he stays there and then kisses her right after she threw up. Okay, Tara and Darcy. Um, make making out on a beach vibes, I guess. I'm sorry. Quote: He thinks she tried to drown herself on purpose, which makes him angry. I listen. If someone was trying to was captive. I don't think their first instinct would be to drown themselves, especially since, obviously, she's had access to things like cutlery, mm-hmm. and she could just, mm-hmm. like, ah. It's really, I don't put it's it in the notes, but, like, once they get back on the horse and start going again, he, like, makes sure to, like, protectively put her, like, normally whenever they're riding the horse, his arm is around her a little bit, and his hand is always on her stomach, right? Would make me uncomfortable, but sure, whatever. Um... But, like, now, after this, he, like, has his arms, like, around both sides of her so she can't, like, fall off, uh, thinking, and she's all, like, in her head, like, wow, if I even tried to kill myself on purpose, I wouldn't try it the same way again, because it clearly already failed once, you idiot. Yeah, um, Bye Bye Beach, um, I, <laughs> the quote, they camp at night and make out somewhere with some dry humping, quote, um, I'm sorry. Quote, it sucks when he believes it's love they feel for each other and she argues it's just luck. End quote. Um, he says bye bye, but he comes back to the quote, snuggle her warm. Quote. Um, as she's about to fall asleep, he admits what he feels as a just lust. Okay, pestilence. Yeah, he has this thing where he Oh, he longs for her! He longs! Yeah, um, he has this thing where he likes to tell her things, secrets about ha- his feelings for her while he thinks that she's asleep, um, or he's half conscious, and so, like, half the time she's like, I don't know if that was actually real, or she doesn't, like, tell him that she knows what he said, so then she, like, knows these things 
about how he feels about her, but, like, doesn't do any actions about it, and he doesn't do any actions because he thinks it has to be a secret, and it's, let me tell you, it's real annoying. <laughs> Anyways, he longs for her. Oh! Uh, they're breaking into the house. Hey, hi, there's people here. Um, the quote man, that's not man of the house, that's the bitch of the house. Um, Nick is uh, abusive, apparently, and has anger issues. And you can guess how long, how well him and Pestilence get along. Zero blue tomato tomato thumbs down emoji. Oh, yeah, no, literally the um, first thing he says is, get out of my house, both you and your whore. And the way Pestilence was, like, totally just, like, normal Pestilence with him, but as soon as he calls Sarah a whore, um, Pestilence starts banging him up against a wall and almost chokes him out. Um. Yeah, I was getting to that. Iconic. Um, Nick catches them kissing and starts calling her a whore in a bunch. So, you know, just stand up, just a stand up guy. Uh-huh. Yeah, this is where I got fun with my note taking. I can imagine kissing someone you're automatically for. Like, okay. what if they're dating? You don't know that. <laughs> yeah, he, there's like a whole point where he starts asking her how many times she had to suck his dick before he let her live and all this stuff. I'm right. sick. And then there's another point where his wife thinks that, like, if she tries to sleep with Pestilence, then it will save her kids, and... He kissed on Sarah! Gunpoint two nights later! Yep. It just comes to two nights later to that. I was like, you know. And we go... They're in the woods, and why are we planning to shoot her? She, what has she done wrong? And then Pestilence just comes up and shoot him, and shoots him with a bow. A few times, A yeah. few times, um... Nick drops in his own blood. Thumbs up emoji. Yeah. Real messy. Um, yeah, no, his whole plan was to shoot her uh, because then it will at least possibly annoy Petra And She's like, that's not going to work. He doesn't care about me. And he's like, well, even that? if it won't work, at least he'll be taking a whore out. Yeah. And then Petra comes you know, up behind him. He's a real whore. He's Nick. Yeah, he comes up behind her, uh, and he's all like, hey, don't do this, and Nick's all like, I'm gonna do this, um, and threatens to kill her, and does shoot, but, like, uh, she manages to dodge, and then Petrolis shoots him, like, three times in the chest, and he's still alive, and he's just calling them whores more and more and more, and she tries to, like, save him, because she's, like, first responder, she's like, oh my god, he's dying, um, and Petrolis is like, bitch, leave him the fuck alone. <laughs> and then he's all like, you slut, you whore. And then uh, Pestilence shoots him through the throat and he just drowns in his own blood. <laughs> LOL. Yep. Um, she, uh, Nick took her while she was asleep, so she has no shoes, no nothing. And we're in, we're in Canada. It's winter. She's gonna lose some toes. Um, quote, Pestilence rubs her warm feet. Her feet warm. Uh, uh, sweating face emoji with tongue sticking out. That's what the notes say, besties. I I did not write these notes. Uh, Rose wrote these notes. Rose, you got something to tell me? Listen, a foot massage sounds real nice sometimes. Also, I always have cold feet. You so the throat. imagery of a man or a person in general rubbing my feet to keep me warm just sounds so nice to me because my feet are always so fucking you're freezing. In- <laughs> I love you. Okay. We love you. We're a happy family, okay? You can laugh. It's a joke. You can laugh. You can giggle. Uh, she gets warm, changed. They leave. Um, um, he must be initially spared to do to a sign from God. Yeah. It was an angelic symbol that um, meant misery. Um. Actually, I'm gonna thank you for a sign from God. Oh, I'm really here. <laughs> um, this is bringing you back to the token, and I need you to read the lyrics of the summoning to confirm or deny if they are the summoning coded, because I have a feeling that they are. Probably. For my mental health. Read the lyrics. Okay. And confirm for me. Thank you. Okay. Um, um, Sarah gets sad about everything, which worries Pestilence. Um, they stop in Seattle at a house where an elderly couple live, and they're nice because old people. Well, that doesn't always apply, but you know. Um, ah, the old lady tried Pestilence for letting Sarah get so cold. That's sweet. 
after they die, special and birth, the elderly couple. Why am I going to cry? It was like three chapters of elderly couple things, but I just skipped right past it because I was like, you don't need to know any of these details. It's uh, just sad times where Pestilence learns what love is like. Uh, his only fear is Sarah dying and having to be alone. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> they, quote, if they take him back together and Pestilence has some fun with her boobs. End quote. Me win. <laughs> Yeah, no, he's all buddy from uh, digging up the grave and whatnot, right? Um, and he's like, hey, go inside. Yeah, um, imagine digging up graves from people you killed with your disease business, and then you immediately go take a shower with a lady and you fondle her boobs. Like, <laughs> <laughs> he's like stroking her leg, and there's some weird things. And then she goes and straddles him, and then he just plays with her boobs for a day, and she's like really into it. But then she gets out of the bath because she's like, oh my god, this is not the time or place. <laughs> yeah. It's like five pages. Um, Oh, they go through Seattle, and she's like, why are we not being attacked? Uh, but Peshul has already been through uh, while she was sleep- while she was sleeping. sleeping. Um, so everyone's already sick to harm them. This is basically his new tactic. Okay, that makes sense. Um, can you confirm or deny on the summoning? Uh, you want me to look it up right now? Yes! <laughs> Why would I say it if I knew the one to a call right now? Uh, yeah, this is very limb coded, yeah. Just the whole entire Pause. series. Pause. I need to look up something real quick. Okay. I need to I need to look up something real quick. Hannibal is trending on Tumblr. <laughs> Okay, they start calling um, time uh, when the horsemen arrive, the arrival, and now Rose looks all I I want to rewatch the movie. And I say, go fuck yourself. <laughs> they kept on saying the arrival, and every time I was like, wow, that's a good movie. H and I should watch that again. <laughs> and then I was like, hey, I should put that in my notes. I feel like they would like that. <laughs> yes, I did. Um, I would uh, also like you know, yeah, around uh, this point is when I start voice uh like, doing a voice of text in my phone to type the notes around this Yeah, time. I noticed the, the, the when I uh, came across the OK in yeah. all caps. Yeah. Um, they get hot and heavy. Pestilence admits that he, when they first met, he wanted to kill her. Uh, they planned to kill her. Uh, but thought because the shadows on her tent made the shape of the angelic word mercy. <gasps> they bang with 100 pages left in the book. Yeah. They bang some more. Um, then he gets all sweet and romantic until he, until he takes them to a church to get married to she do with the banging is sacred and when she turns him down because she won't marry someone who's in the Christmas race. Yeah, um, I, I don't know if you remember that voice message I sent you where I was like, I tried to, I was like mentally thinking of every detail I remember about this book. I was like, I could totally do this without like having to reread it. And I was going to give you this exact example. And I was like, I'm not going to tell it to you because you're going to find it fucking hilarious and you're going to laugh. And I mean, it's so funny. And thankfully, you did laugh, so. Yeah. No, that's so hilarious. You know, literally, they bang, they bang again in the middle of the night, and then he makes her breakfast in bed, and he's being all sweet, and he's kissing her, and giving her little pecks, and then next thing she knows, they're at church, and she's like, um, excuse me, what? He's like, time to get married. I was inside of you, so we should get married. (gasps) Well, I'm reading the notes. Shut up. Um, they're attacked again, and then they take her to a church, and... They they sep- they're separated and they torture pestilence. Why am I infected? Uh, one of the men condescendingly makes her say, "Quote for her own good." Quote when it's clear they planted dissect her to learn how she has to die from the plant. Oh my god! Uh, oh hell yeah, she steals the gun and escapes the fine pestilence's tricky skills. Hell yeah. Um. <laughs> I'm going to read the notes from now on. This is much better than normally happens. <laughs> um, she finds men trying to bury him alive, which couldn't he just dig his way out? Um, Eventually, yes. Uh, they go to a Bennett house and stays by him until he feels. Um, oh, he low-key missed his full feelings for her, and then he eats a meal. Feeling <laughs> <laughs> It's just 
a little, it's just a quick little snack. Why can't you say normal things? He goes down on her. That's a normal sentence. Thank God you licky lick, because I literally would have bashed my head against the wall and you would have heard it. Also, tee hee, in parentheses, in parentheses, tee hee, uh, laughing face, like the actual laughing face, because Rose is that type of person, parentheses, period. Um, they bang. They have a heart to heart. Um, she's all, admit she's no longer a prisoner. Um, he's still trying to get her to marry him, which, valid. He's kind of real. Um, listen, uh, the way the way it's being described, this this uh, angelic being is banging something for the first time. Something, you know what I mean? Yeah. And he's like, oh my god. And I'm sorry. Imagine an angelical being banging you and be like, oh my god. Like it. it imagine rocking an, an angelical being being rolled enough for them to want to marry you. Yeah. Married or something. What the fuck? Yeah, literally, um, when he takes her to the church, she's like, wow, I took his virginity, and now he wants to take my hand. I'm good. I get it. But I don't understand what she's on about. Um, uh, oh. <laughs> Quote, the next day, they have a grade A, conversa- grade A conversation about having children, since they keep having unprotected sex, end quote. Um, can he, like, just, like, not let that happen? Because he is an angelical being, right? Could oh, he kill anything? No. Before, like, One of his brothers anything? can do that. That's a later book. One of his brothers can do that, yeah. But not him. Wow. The idea, um, throws and scares him so Sakawa could be human. And he's tasked to kill all of humanity. Oh. Um. They're finished, they're talking, but it's, you know, uh, and, uh, prophet, quote, uh, cultist, if you ask me, in parentheses, uh, not them, stop them in the road and offers pestilence. Three women to do what he wished, what he wished in order, in, in barter for his people's lives. Yeah, um, I'm like, you know, he's like surrounded by a bunch of other people. They're all wearing white robes. He's all like, I'm the prophet Ezekiel. And in her head, Sarah's like, ha, yeah, right. Um, it's very well, weird and culty vibes. Like, yeah. He said, no. You said in white robes, and my immediate thought was KKK. You know, you know. Anyway, oh! Uh, Pestrus is like, boo, tomato, tomato, thumbs down emoji. Yeah. Um, uh, they have another fight about how he's killing everyone, and he could choose not to, and then bada bing, bada boom, bang, bang. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so I'm serious. Um, it's about to get very serious really fast. Um, another fire pun. Anyways. <laughs> what I said, it gets I real like fast. I think fire pun is happening when they are ambush- ambushed by a bomb. <laughs> when I said it gets really serious really fast, I meant in the next sentence. <laughs> uh, they shoot. Before they shoot Pestilence, point blank, he tries to get them to leave Sarah alone. But then they knock her out with a kick to the head. Okay. Uh, these people know pestilence can't die, so they plan to torture him. First by crucifying, crucifying him and then burning him. I think Jesus wasn't his earlier. Full circle, full circle. I knew, I know. Um, oh, yep. I my eyes skipped to a word further down in the paragraph. Oh, um. Uh, a bunch of rape is threatened. Yay! I don't know. We're fine. All right. It's fine. Um, I'm sorry. They kick her down a street that they set up in Peshawar and of sight, and then shoot her in the abdomen with a shotgun, and then light Peshawar on fire. I am not having fun, you bitch. Yep. I'm sorry, for some reason the, j- the gang just goes to bed despite knowing Pestilence can't die, so once the fire has burned away, his binds, can you get on my face, I love you, but like, my lord, baby, uh, the fire has burned away his binds, uh, he drags his charred body over to Sarah and cries, holding her, who has conscious brain worries about dying because she doesn't want Pestilence to be alone, oh my god, she wakes up, she briefly wakes back up to Pestilence somehow walking while Karen started to trick the, trick his skills. Hell yeah, Trix has got us since nobody's got us. Um, oh my God, I'm so smart. 
Trixie. Trixie, Trixie, <laughs> come <laughs> over, Bestie, come over. <laughs> Trixie's cool. Who's got us? We haven't finished the sentence. You don't know Trixie's cool. I have all of it burned. I'm like, you know, when she sees this, her only thought is bastards. So. Real. Uh, she briefly wakes up again. Uh, Petrus is trying to get someone to help her, but won't, because he says he loves her for the first time and wants him to suffer. I'm not reading the last fucking you bitch. What the fuck? Hey, Missy, I want you to scroll fuck? down a little bit. He kills the person and then paradise. The end. I hope you know that's that's all I scrolled down to originally because I opened this before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, okay, I didn't read any of it, and I saw the end. So that's the end of it. Yeah, I hate you. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, she comes to and has a great conversation with Death. Uh, uh, parenthesis, my favorite boy. Thank you very much. And parenthesis, um, who's pleased by passion falling in love with a human so lets her return to her body. Death, I love you. Yes, I love you. I love him too. I don't but I love you. Um, she comes to in a hospital. Um, everyone else is dead because pestilence. Um, I really like the word pestilence. I don't know. Um, oh my god, as soon as he sees her life, his face softens. He sits the wagon with a bunch of blankets, signs for he for her. People, the people didn't die from plague, but his vengeance. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Um, she's a, she's bedridden for weeks. Uh, I'm not saying that shit. Um, but he's fine. Remember, um, remember when you said that if I put licky lick, you would have banged your head against a wall? Well, guess what? You can bang your head against a wall because I put it down later on. No, I don't feel like carving myself today. Maybe if it was. Like two days ago, I would have okay. done it. Um, I just wish him because this one is the one where he actually eats a meal, and the other one it was just a quick lick. But you know, um, they bang again. Uh, he eats her out because Rose can't form normal fucking sentences. Um, in parentheses, I'm not sorry. You know what she's not sorry for because you know what she says. I'm not saying it because fuck you. Um, uh, he's. Peshlin's in deep with his goal and his mission, and spreads disease all through the West Coast and all the way down to New Mexico. Uh, are we getting tacos first? Oh, without going anywhere. So we can't get tacos. Take them on. I know. She's really upset about this because her whole dream was to move to Mexico. She's like, at least it'll be warm there. Can't get no damn tacos. He killed everybody. Oh. Where am I? Where is the... Okay. Uh, it upsets her, and he won't admit he could, he, he won't, he admits he could reverse it, but won't. Oh, my God, fuck off. Mm-hmm. Uh, she leaves him after a minute, she loves him. Oh, my God, Sarah. Oh, my God, he takes her back as pressure and locks her in, in the bedroom for a week, but eventually lets her go. Oh, my God. Um, weeks later, and all this, they have recovered. Yeah, literally, it's just cuts to weeks later, and she just walked at home. She returns home to your family, but is sad without her horseman. Fuck off. Uh, one night, he just shows up and admits he didn't let her go, but followed her at a safe distance. Is this worried about her? He planned to stay away, but he couldn't, and now they're banging again. Whatever, I get it. Um, he melted down his armor and crown and turned them into a ring. She finally agrees to marry him, and he goes by Victor now. Uh, epilogue, five years later, they have kids. War has awoken. Dun, dun, dun. Yep. Uh, I feel like pestilence. The victor is a understandable pilot. Uh, the way he describes pilot. it, he she's all like, "Why do you choose Victor?" And he's all like, "Well, it's kind of close to conquer, right?" And she's like, suddenly very worried that he's like gonna go wild well, crazy again. And he's all like, "No, no, no," because my whole thing is like, he's past once the conqueror, supposed to conquer the world, but instead he was conquered by someone else, aka her, and he's her victor. I get it. Uh-huh. Um. Uh huh. Um, this is my second favorite book in the series. After I get it. Death. Because it's Death fun. Death actually makes me cry at the end. So be prepared. This is fun. This is good. <laughs> this was so funny. 
I got I really wild won. halfway through on the What if I read this? Like, I know what happens. So like, what if I read it? <laughs> yeah, you gotta read all the sex scenes. Have fun. <laughs> in the third one, they have sex in the ocean. Ew? Yeah. That's where my thought goes, too. He also binds Sorry, her with plants in the third one. Fucking ocean water all, all of weird in your things happen in the third one. The third one's the weirdest one. Like, ocean water, tiny fish. I know, right? Dirt, debris. Oh, ew! I know, right? Um, Talk about Infection City, USA. Don't worry, it's fine. Um, Yeah, no, the third one's the weirdest one. Like, the first and second definitely have, like, the same exact beats uh, as same exact style, blah, 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 blah. The third one is, like, it has the similar beats, but it does them in a different order, right? And it's the most different from all the other ones, uh, except for technically death, uh, because death is a lot more of just, like, ending the series, figuring out if the world's gonna end, or what's happening to everyone else, all this stuff, right? Uh, but the, death is the most on its own, I completely, like... You're really hearing eating well, animals, <laughs> Okay. Death is very much the one that's, like, most, uh, on its own, like, most different from the rest but also still because he's was a part of the story. Um, and it makes me cry at the end. So, you know, it's a good time. Okay. I read it twice in 2022. I will turn the light up on TV. Anyways, did you have a fun time? Yes, I did, actually. It was really fun to... Yeah, the way I type through. notes is really funny, don't you love it? This is how no, I, I type that. notes every I time. Really what? This is how I type notes every time. What the fuck? Yeah. It's much funnier getting your live reactions and reading it, though. Oh, my God. Oh, that was so good. That's hilarious, I okay. Oh, God. It's great, because all my comedy is done long beforehand, and so all the comedy is just you reading it and then reacting. And it's great. I love this. This is a great time. We should do it like this more often. Mind fucks yeah, you want to do with it? Hello, guess who had a bunch of technical difficulties? It was me. Oh my god. <laughs> we did, there was like a whole thing where we thought the whole entire episode had to be trashed. And we thought we'd have to re-record. But I really did not. Because it's the fish's blind reactions to all of that was hilarious. Um, There's no way we could repeat that. That was so good. Uh, so, very happy. And then we went to record the outro. I purposely pressed the unmute button. I remember pressing it because I saw that it was on, but apparently the whole seven mu- minutes were muted, so you don't get to hear the h- great Hannibal joke. I'll just retell it. Um, the fish was in the background the whole entire time, like making dinner and taking out the trash, and they went to put a giant chunk of chicken, like very large, in their air fryer. And I was like, "Wow, that's the size of a head. At least you know you can put a human head in your air fryer." And then they said, okay, Hannibal, it was very funny. <laughs> so funny that I said it. Um, anyways, uh, good times. Um, also, in the original outro, I do go into how the second one is the racist one and how I'm going to do research on that uh, for the notes and whatnot when I read that one for obvious reasons <laughs> called i'm a white woman i have no right um and whatnot so i'm gonna take the uh thoughts and opinions about uh this topic from other people who have more of a right uh to talk about it uh and whatnot and uh who i respect on their opinions and whatnot um about this mixed with my general understanding like i could clearly see where the uh racist conversation could come from <laughs> you know <laughs> being as all the murder is happening via uh, via the real people uh right and it takes place in the middle east kind of questionable all the violence that happens and uh, people who do that are from the Middle East. Can, can, can you pick up what I'm putting down? Yeah, um, kind of obvious. <laughs> um, but I am going to look into uh, people's thoughts and opinions about the specific topic. Because uh, I feel like that's a important thing to bring up at the end of the next episode. So that's the thing. Uh, 
the rest of the month is just more of this. It's very funny. Uh, I say as I have I have to put in jokes, but um, yeah, that's gonna be a thing. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Other things, thoughts and opinions. I don't think so. Um, stay tuned for the February calendar because, and hear me out. It's gonna be wild. We're doing double episodes again in February, so stay tuned for that. Uh, hence why the fish is creating the love hypothesis. And yeah, I think that's it.